on. Welcome to Geek Philosophy Podcast Episode 6. We are on our way to double digits. Yeah. <laughs> Closing in. All right. Um, got my co-host here, Clay. Hey. Don here. Um, thanks, as always, for listening. Uh, appreciate all the people making comments and giving us suggestions. Also, you can check us out on iTunes, Google Play, uh, SoundCloud. You can also check us out on uh, I on YouTube. And we are, we did start a new uh, new platform, Twitch TV. Yep. And you're going to start seeing more content on there. Uh, you can find us on Twitch TV under Mr. Geek Philosophy. And you can start seeing us do some gaming streams and so forth. We haven't set up a schedule yet. But stay tuned, there will be more on that. All right? But um, let's get into it. Episode 6. Um, well, first, let's all take a moment of silence for Stephen Ditko, um, who is the co creator of Spider Man, Doctor Strange, and he's not just known for Marvel, he did a little bit of DC. The question if you are a Justice, Unlimited, Justice League Unlimited fan, you were introduced to the question, the paranoid. Um, conspiracy theorist who was a superhero at the same time uh, he, he definitely was like the runaway character in that series yeah. so um, he, he did create him so again uh, just a moment of silence for him so I know uh, he, um, he actually um, for those of you who might be keeping up on this I know he, um, he created Spider-Man, co-created Spider-Man and Doctor Strange uh, he passed away at the age of 90. This is actually something that happened last month, but I guess his estate, his family, yeah. uh, just let everybody know. Um, so if you have a second, go out and check out um, uh, any of Marvel's social media. They, they did a pretty good uh, tribute to him. Uh, I think we reposted it as well on our Facebook account. Uh, but uh, definitely a, uh, a huge name uh, uh, in, in the world of comic books. So we wanted to make sure we threw that out there this week. All right, now... On to the exciting stuff. So, they're still back and forth about this Fox and Disney deal. Uh, I know it looked like it was a locked deal. They gave them a pretty sizable deal that Comcast can't even can't even match. And there's something else with Comcast I forgot to mention. I just got it, like a, a glimpse of it this morning. Yeah. But um, the main one of the leading shareholders, Robert Weiss is suing um, to stop the Disney merger at this moment. Um, It looks like uh, the proxy that came out in June didn't have all the right financial information. He has some concerns about who's been dealing in this merger and so forth. So it's interesting to see how much this plays into it. We we don't know. This is Fox side, so we don't know who on Disney side is going to be like, all right, I don't know if the mouse is going to come out and be like, all right, shut up, Robert. <laughs> or is this going to make it to court and find out? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I mean, I know some of the details, the general uh, mm-hmm. outline of it. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough to stop something like this. Um, it seems a little odd. I, I guess he was just waiting until the very last minute um, because they were, I mean, they were looking to put pen to paper pretty soon, right? I, I, I think it was supposed <clears> to be this week. And yeah. this kind of puts a halt on that. It was supposed to be the 10th, yeah. and this happened right on the 10th. It was like, all right, hold up, can't put anything yet. So it did, he did do something. He stopped the signing on the 10th. Yeah. So let's see how long this is going to last. If it's just fixing the financials, I think that's a pretty quick fix. Um, yeah. If it's a little bit more than that, um, with the whole allegations of who's doing the underwriting and so forth, it could, get, it could be get ugly. So, yeah, I mean, he would really have to prove quite a bit of malicious intent in order to yeah, and I don't think there's no evidence. On I don't think there's no evidence of malicious intent right now. I think there's just a there's a, a paperwork issue that right. needs to be fixed. So hopefully they get all that sorted out. Uh, the sooner they do, uh, the sooner we can see uh, some uh, X Men and Fantastic Four in the MCU. Yeah. And on a note, I don't know if you heard this because um, this is literally late breaking news. Comcast threw a bid in for Sky streaming service. Which really? is a part of Fox. They just just for Sky. Now, I know us as comic book fans really think Marvel did this to get Fantastic Four and X Men into the universe, but they didn't. <laughs> they want that streaming service. Now, I don't know why Comcast threw a bid in for them for Sky. I know Sky is a big yeah. uh, European streaming service. Mm-hmm. Uh, it 
I understand why they did it, but I don't think Disney wants that off the table. I think Disney wants to keep that part. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, it would be kind of strange for them to already have this deal pretty much done uh, uh, with uh, with Disney. And then to try and cut out part of that pie and give it to somebody else. Yeah. Um, now I'm sure that either way, you know, it would be great for Comcast's business if they got any part of this deal. Uh, but it would be really strange um, to kind of put the brakes on the overall deal and then cut a chunk out of it and give it to somebody. Now, honestly, else. Honestly, we know that Disney has been told they have to like sell the ESPN portion, mm. or not the ESPN, the Fox Sports portion. Right. I don't see why. Oh. Well, I can kind of see why NBC or Comcast didn't go for the sports side. Because um, I think they might have the same problems, too, with NBC Sports and so right. forth. They probably yeah, have the yeah. same problems, Com- too. Yeah. Yeah. Comcast is the parent company for NBC, so NBC Sports and all of their But I feel channels. like that's just weird for Comcast to be like, hey, you you have to sell off a portion of your business, and you decide you're going to sell off the Fox Sports? Let me buy this over here, though. <laughs> right. That, that just takes the value of the... Of it down because they still have to sell that Fox Sports sport portion. Yeah. I mean, I, so yeah, I, I understand um, Comcast's motivations, but I don't know why. I don't see the uh, benefit in Disney, right? In this, like, well, well for for Fox to do to do all this, I, I, yeah, there's no reason why they would. And this is one thing I learned in the negotiation: you have to understand what the other side needs, mm-hmm. so you can try. Not to fully give them what they need, but give them something so you can get something out of it. That's the whole point of negotiation, a give and take. So if you're going to try to negotiate with Fox to get a portion that Disney really wants, and it does not benefit them whatsoever. Like I, I can understand if it said, hey, if you sell it off Sky streaming service, you can keep um, the Fox Sports thing. Right. But there's no way they can keep the Fox Sports thing because then they're still a monopoly. Mm-hmm. And then that hurts Comcast's side of the business because they still are sports. And you don't want to lose that much share in the sports department. Right. So, yeah. And I'm, let's face it, America, we are about our sports. Americans are about our sports. That's, right. that's where money is, except in the NFL this past year. <laughs> Well, and, you know, the, the rest of the world has their own sports, and we kind of have our own, too. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but, but it yeah. seems like everyone else's sports is more international than ours. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of isolated on that. Uh, you know, we, we have, I guess, baseball. Baseball yeah. is played well, no, uh, pretty base, internationally. Yeah, baseball is played internationally. Basketball is played internationally. Football is the only one that's really not played internationally. Right. Like, rugby's played internationally. Mm. Soccer or the real football is played internationally. <laughs> but NFL is not done internationally, so... Yeah. Well, wait and see. I think rugby will probably get to be probably the biggest international sport that we have going on in this country, but uh, I'm a little biased on that. Yeah, you so. are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So while we're on the uh, on the Disney side of things, uh, we actually have uh, uh, some news that, uh, you know, last week I think uh, we were talking about rumors about Billy D. Williams coming back for episode nine. Yeah, uh, and yeah, you know, that seems to be continuing. Um, now it seems to be less of a rumor and pretty much solidified. Uh, you know everything except Which, for an official word. If you were going to do this, you knew you had to bring Lando back. Right. Um, so it was, to me, it was just a no. It was just a no brainer. Right, and, and you know that that gives an additional tie to the uh, to the older movies. Um, I think it's a great idea. I, I like Billy D. Williams, and uh, you know he's for those of you who don't remember, even though it was just kind of a cameo. Not only was he one of my favorites from Star Wars, but uh, from the original Batman movies, he yeah. was Harvey Dent. Uh, we never actually got to see him become Two Face, uh, but he played Harvey Dent yeah, in those he, first he two Batman in, movies. Yeah, he was in the the um, courthouse scenes and so forth. So. Right. Uh, and then we also find out uh, in uh, Episode Nine related news that uh, it sounds like Carrie Russell is going to be joining him uh, in Episode Nine. Uh, and she's on. Uh, is it the Americans? She's on the Americans. Um, she's done a couple movies, yeah. um, like Bedtime Story with um, Adam. Adam. Uh, the, how did I forget that man's name? Sex work. What? Happy Gilmore. Oh, uh, uh, Adam Sandler. Sandler. There it is. Why am I having Adam, a brain Adam, fart? Adam Sessler, I think, was from uh, G4 <laughs> TV. Like, 
How, how, am I having a, how am I having a brain fart on him? Is he been on Netflix for too long? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oversaturation. So, so it sounds like we have, you know, we have Carrie Russell uh, coming back or, or coming for a new character, and we have Billy D. Williams coming back to reprise Lando. Now, the obvious thing that the internet kind of went for was, uh, oh, a, another brunette woman in a Star Wars movie. So this obviously must be Ray's mom. I don't know. I, I think that would be uh, kind of a um, an easy way out of things. I it mean, is way maybe. too easy. Out of it. And at the same time, she, I don't know. It, Unless unless her name is something Kenobi, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. So you know we'll we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But uh, but she is confirmed to be mm-hmm. in the movie, and it sounds like it's all but officially confirmed that Billy D. Williams will be in episode nine. Um, and uh, uh, kind of on the other side of uh, the aisle here with uh, DC, uh, um, a, a non Disney uh, property. Uh, we now have uh, word uh, went viral uh, just north of us. Oh yeah, this week. my old stomping ground. So Gal Gadot, full God, these 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 actors are going above and beyond, and yeah. I love every bit of it. Yeah, uh, went to Children's Hospital in uh, Fairfax, Virginia, a really really false church, Virginia. Um, I Nova, and she was in full Wonder Woman costume. Yep, and going around seeing the kids, and that's that's a. Like and what it didn't sound like staged. It didn't sound like it was like something thought up months in advance. There wasn't no right. poster saying, "Oh yeah, come see Gal Gadot in full costume." Yeah, on this, this date, this slowly leaked uh, in a, in a natural way. Uh, you know, as people were posting mm-hmm. stuff from their own phones, like, it wasn't like a press. She, we all know she'd been filming up there for her movie, mm-hmm. and it seemed like one day she just was like, "Let's go to go to the children, the kids' hospital." And, that's a pretty big kids hospital, and to see that many kids, that's, I think that's very worthwhile. And I feel like a lot of the characters, a lot of the actors, are doing more and more yeah. like that. Um, yeah, we've seen Johnny Depp do it. We've uh, seen Johnny uh, Depp do it. Jack Sparrow. We've seen, um, we've seen Chris Evans do it. Mm-hmm. We've seen um, Chris Pine do it. Like A lot of them are doing this, so right. uh, hats off to them. Chris Pratt has also done it. Right. Um, I think... Well, he was sad because he did it for like his son's. He did it for like charity one time, and he did it for his son's birthday. And his son was like, "I didn't want a Captain America." <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but yeah, for those of you who don't know, Wonder Woman is filming in uh, the the second Wonder Woman Wonder Woman movie is filming in Northern Virginia right now. I think they even had uh, there's a uh, a mall that's either under renovation. Yeah, or it's abandoned. um, it's the King's um, it's the Alexandria Mall. Mm-hmm. It's like right off of King's Road, but it's it's a decrepit mall. Yeah. It really is. It's like falling apart, and they were filming there, and I'm like, wow. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's cool. If you get a chance, go check out some of the pictures. It'll put a smile on your face. You get to see uh, all the kids meet Wonder Woman, uh, you know, toddlers and uh, young children in, in the hospital. Yeah. So wait, I mean, are they still filming? Like, are we really going to get a trailer? San Diego Comic Con? Do you think we're still going to get a trailer? Maybe a teaser, but I don't. I don't expect to see. I, I'm sure. I think we're gonna get a full blown Aquaman. Yeah, and maybe trailer. a teaser for Wonder Woman. Uh, but you're still Wonder Woman's still far out. Like, yeah, you, and and you're talking about if they're still filming it, um, then you know they certainly don't have any special effects no. in, in anything yet. That's all going to be done post production, probably. So a teaser for that. Yeah. Short little five second teaser. Um, I think Shazam. We're seeing pictures. Posted yep. and so forth for that, him in full costume, grabbing a soda. <laughs> yeah, if you want to check that out, uh, uh, take a look at our Facebook page. Uh, uh, we uh, we shared that I think yesterday. Yep. Uh, so you can see, get your first. It's also official. on our Instagram. Yeah. Um, but the first official look, and he doesn't look bad. Zachary Levy does not look bad in full costume. No, no, I, I'm still really curious to see how it translates as a movie. The, okay, here's what I'm curious to see. I want to see. The Rock in full Black Adam costume, next to Zach Levy. See, but I think Black Adam's going to be easier to translate than a kid who turns into a superhero. It's basically well, no. I just want to see because, of course, Shazam and Black Adam fight. Right. I just want to see how much bigger The Rock is to Zach well, that's Levy. True. Yeah, I mean Zach Levy's a fit dude, but <laughs> he, he ain't The Rock. Yeah, he is not Dwayne Johnson. 
uh, yeah, a, a mountain of a man. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing how that comes together. And I'm sure they'll be able to do well with it. Yeah. Um, I just, but in my head, I can't I figure it out. I think they just did some recasting, too. Um, who's the guy, Desmond, Desmond um, who played in Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one? Oh, yep. He yeah. just got cast as the Shazam, the mm-hmm. wizard. And I swore they already picked this, like, last year. Because I thought it was the uh, the guy from This Is Us, the older guy that was that, yeah. that passed. I thought he was supposed to be. Maybe that was the, the case because it does seem really late to make a casting decision. Yeah, it seems very very late to yeah. make a casting decision, and then now and we're we're getting close. Yeah. Like they're in post production, I think next month. Yeah, so I, I don't remember the actor's full name, but this is the guy at the very beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy who's tracking Star Lord. Desmond something. Um, yeah. he has one of the hard names to say. <laughs> But yeah, we'll get that to y'all. Um, let's stick. Let's stick with the whole movie thing while we're still at it, because um, Kevin Feige he just loves to troll us. Yeah, I swear he loves to troll us. Because all right, so if you don't know, it's a couple weeks I think last week or week before we we stated that um, Tom Holland leaked the 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 title for a Spider Man movie Far From right. Home, which lets us know we're getting a Spider Man movie. So something's gonna happen. They're gonna all come back. <laughs> At, at some point, yeah. <laughs> so. um, unless he's just going to be a ghost, and then we're going to find out Miles Morales is put in place. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah. far from home, and we got Jake Gyllenhaal as the villain Mysterio, which I'm really looking forward to. It's uh, somebody who um, originally I think Bruce Campbell was supposed to come back in the fourth original series, the fourth Spider-Man film. Sam Raimi had wanted him to be Mysterio since he had been in every other Spider-Man movie. Um, so I've been looking forward to that. And then it got canceled. They did a reboot with the Amazing Spider-Man series. So, but I'm a big Mysterio fan. I'm looking to see how. Oh no! I'm, I when I heard Jake Gyllenhaal, I'd rather see because there was also rumors he might be Batman. So right. I'd rather see him play Mysterio than Batman. So cool. Let's go with that. Let's yeah. stick with that. I like it. But. Um, Sometimes like he's a he's an incredible actor, but some every time I hear his voice, I think of two movies, not his good ones. Yeah, I always think of uh, Prince of Persia. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Automatically, for some reason, every time someone says his name, I think of right. Prince of Persia. I think of Brokeback Mountain. Well, Brokeback Mountain had a lot of. I mean, it was critically acclaimed. Prince of Persia is kind of on the opposite. Now, end all right, of let's schedule. face it. Brokeback Mountain got more jokes about it than they did awards. <laughs> well, I think a lot of that was because it was a little ahead of its time. But yeah, yeah, that, 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 is, that is true. We make more fun of that movie than we, than we give it props for. Yeah, but yeah, Prince of Persia, let's not even go there. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but uh, so uh, Kevin Feige basically had uh, admitted that... Um, he allowed Tom Holland to leak this title because it comes Tom to Marvel Holland, World. If it it ain't getting nothing's happening without his say so, <laughs> right? But chances are Tom Holland would have slipped up and let it uh, let it out there either way. But only because he's Kevin, known for that. Only because Kevin allowed it to. <laughs> right. Well, in this case, we know that's the truth. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Kevin Feige gave him permission, uh, and he uh, Tom Holland let it let it out in a way that made you question maybe it was a mistake. Yeah, because well, um, he did the same thing with Infinity, uh, Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. He did the exact same thing because he was like, oh, I got this cool thing and it showed the poster and it was Avengers Infinity War. He was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to leak this. Right. No, I but swear that was, I think Kevin, that was a fake one No, too, Kevin yeah. just does this. He, he uses Tom Holland as a puppet. Like, hey, I want something leaked. Tom, come over here. Right. The, the only one I think that was not a fake, that was a true screw-up, uh, was uh, like a year, a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. uh, when um, uh, the, uh, now we're just forgetting names left to right today, the Hulk. Um, oh, uh, the um, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, was Mark being, Ruffalo. Um, my, uh, Mark Ruffalo was being interviewed uh, uh, about a year, year and a half before Infinity War came out, and somebody uh, was talking to him in an interview uh off camera or at the end of an interview about how everything ended and he actually spoiled the ending but it seemed so ludicrous and I won't spoil it now because I know some people may still not have seen it what it's and about to be on it's about to be on DVD if you haven't seen it that's on that's you that's true yeah okay. and yes so, if you're my wife I'm talking to you too it's on you <laughs> 
So skip the next five seconds in this video if you haven't seen it. But Mark Ruffalo let it slip that uh, he said everybody dies. And when you see the look on everybody's faces on either side of them that are just, I think, uh, um, I can't remember who else was in that interview. They just looked shocked. And then they played it off as a joke. And then here we were, you know, a year, year and a half almost later. Almost everyone dies. <laughs> yeah, and almost everyone dies. Um, so, you know, Feige, you know, lets that stuff out uh, on his own. Um, but uh, we also found out some other Kevin Feige news uh, this week um, where he was, uh, he basically said that um, there's still, uh, they did a little bit of juggling with some release dates for yeah, future Marvel movies. Um, and, and 20, I think 2019 is set. But 20, 2020 and 2021 are not. Uh, yeah, they've been shifting those around. And uh, what he did say was um, they have solid dates for 2019, but they still have not uh, said what the future movies will be after Avengers 4. And he even said that they aren't interested in talking about that until after we get uh, Captain Marvel and Avengers 4. So we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, you know, we might even. Uh, I, they might tell us, you know, what those movies are going to be, but we probably won't find anything out more until after Avengers Four comes out. So. Yeah. So, um, all right. So Kevin Feige hasn't really, like, he's getting tight with about everything. He, he's yeah. he's a real strategist when it comes to these movies. Hmm? Like the last ten years has been the best ten years of superhero movies ever. Oh yeah. Anything and, and before yeah. that. Was it's not even worth talking about except for like Superman, Superman one and Superman two. Like those are the only, and Batman yeah. Tim Burton's. Those are the only superhero movies we talk about. I'm sorry, Blade trilogy. Nobody's looking at Blade. Some <laughs> some, some people might be thinking about the Dark Knight, but uh, yeah, because everyone brings up a stink when when um when you when we talk about Deadpool being the number one rated R superhero movie, and then then everyone likes to throw up Blade. Like Blade really wasn't. It wasn't a superhero movie. It was a vampire right. movie. With superhero elements, it wasn't right. really a superhero movie. So let's let's not act like it was, it was that it was that movie. Prior to ten years ago, we basically just had Superman and Batman movies. Yeah, so, so, to varying degrees, mainly. Well, Superman and, had a couple, had a dud or two, and Batman definitely had a few. Duds. Oh yeah, Batman definitely had a yeah. bit duds. But back to my point, he is a strategist. Yeah, and I I trust everything he does. Because he's given us 10 years of great content. Yeah. There's been a couple duds in there, but not enough to be like, yeah, you know, Kevin doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, definitely. I think my only critique about Marvel movies so far, I think, would be mainly just some of the casting choices where they ended up going and recasting. Yeah. That's the only problem that, that I think I've, I've had with them. So, the point I wanted to bring up is, one, do you think this has to do with the Disney Fox merger, him being tight lipped right now. Do you think that has to do with it? I would imagine so. I mean that. Uh, although, I mean, I'm sure that. Well, no, I take that back. At, at this point, because 2019 should be set. Yeah, 2019 is set, but 2020 and 2021. Right. Because we we talked about a couple weeks ago, and we still think it's going to be three years before we see anything out of this real merger. A full blown movie based on properties that used to be owned by Fox. Yeah. Yes, I think we'll get. Uh, um, you know, a stinger at the end of a movie far before then. Do you think Kevin has Plan X in the vaults? <laughs> he's been waiting for this day, and that's why he's shuffling these movies around. I I would think so. I mean, I'm sure that they at least have some sort of rough outline of assuming everything goes through just as they want it. Um, how they would introduce you know the fine details. I'm sure they're still working out, but overall, how they fit into the the greater Marvel universe than and uh, yeah. again I gotta get my hats off of Kevin Feige because I would have been talking my my head off by now like I would be snitching all day long I would have snitched about this whole Fox merger <laughs> five months ago I'd be like yeah we getting them yeah we getting them well, I, I <laughs> this think is why I don't have that job I think it's important that you have somebody like Kevin Feige who's a who's a fanboy at heart but also uh, gets paid enough to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> I can guarantee you, if you gave me Kevin Feige's salary, you could tell me anything in the world, and I'd probably keep my mouth nah, shut. I'm I'm too much of a big mouth. I would have. You could have gave me double Kevin Feige's salary, and I still would snitch. Be like, yeah, we get in the back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but um, th- that brings up San Diego Comic Con too. Right. Do you think? I know last week you, you were thinking that they might bring out a whole like lineup. 
with the recent news, do you think Kevin Feige's Marvel is going to be even less of an appearance at San Diego Comic Con now? I it sounds like it. I mean, if, if they if they I mean, we're getting closer and closer. Like San Diego Comic Con is next week. Yeah, I mean, if if they hold to what they're saying, then I think you know the the most that I can imagine them doing would be uh, maybe a brief. Comic Con only uh, teaser trailer for Captain Marvel, and and then maybe revealing the title of Avengers Four, but outside of that, I'm not sure if they're saying that a a, a public proper Captain Marvel trailer is still months out, yeah. and they're saying that uh, you know Avengers Four, I I'd be surprised if we get a trailer for that just I because we're, we're gonna yeah we're, we're gonna see we're gonna need to see Captain Marvel first yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. I think they ha- kind of have their hands tied on that. I'm not sure what more they could do. So, now, I want to bring this up too. With that being said, does the three movie strategy still work in Kevin Feige's favor with the addition of the Fox acquisitions? I would think so. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I don't think so. Because now we we've created. A whole area where we got Spider Man. We're looking for sequels for Spider Man. Looking yep. for sequels for Doctor Strange, Black Panther, more Avengers, I Captain think... Marvel, and then you're gonna add in. And there's still some other characters they want to introduce. Yeah, I think there's still plenty of opportunity. I think the only awkward part of it is the transition, so that you don't have you don't blow out all the properties that they currently have, and then switch over to nothing but X Men. I, I don't. Fantastic I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I don't think their three, three movie strategy works in the future, because now you come into a situation like this. You have nothing to show at the first major at San Diego Comic Con, because your three movies is done. Yeah. You had the winter, you had the spring, mm-hmm. you had the beginning of summer. You're done. Now I have nothing in my. I have nothing in the last quarter. I yeah. have nothing in fall. I think right now it's kind of an awkward spot because they don't want to spoil too much for Captain Marvel. Uh, you know, they have Captain Marvel and they have Avengers 4. And so they don't want to give too much away for those because they're still a good ways out. Okay, wait, what, what's, what's next year? We have Captain Marvel, Avengers 4. I don't think they've announced a third movie. I mean, we, unless they're Was saying, it Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Well, I, I think the next two on the docket, the ones that have been confirmed, uh, but uh, not necessarily, you know, a logo hasn't been revealed and all that, but Spider-Man... Uh, uh, is that next year? Well, it is next, year. next year, 2020, but as far as what they've actually confirmed is Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man sequels. Okay. Uh, but none of the others have, you know, I think they said that they are planning on doing a Doctor Strange uh, 2, um, but... Uh, you know, the, the other movies, nothing has actually been confirmed. I think Sp- it sounds like Spider Man and Guardians are the, the might ones be the, that, the ones that we're closest to in the next phase. Because I don't think we're, I don't, my gut tells me we're not getting the Spider Man movie next next year. Probably not next year. I think yeah. if we get it in 2020, we yeah. might get a Spider Man movie. Unless they're working on it right now and nobody yeah. said anything. Um, James Gunn's still working on a script, so it can't be Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Like, he's still working on that script. Well, he turned in the first draft. Yeah, so, um, so that's, that's, that's out for next year. What's the, what's the third movie next year? I don't know. So we, we have to wait and see. Now, that could be one. Is maybe. It Iron Man? There's no, there's no, there's nothing on no, Iron Man as I, of late. No, I don't, for one, I don't think we need another Iron Man I don't movie. think we need another one, but he signed up to do another one. Contractual, he's still, I think he's on contract for another Spider-Man movie. He renewed. Right, and that makes sense. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe he'll maybe he'll have a cameo or something. I personally don't think that Tony Stark's going to make it out of Avengers Four, um, both because he's by and far the highest paid actor in that franchise and that you universe. Start, you start cutting some some dollars off. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about. I mean, he was making hundreds uh, of millions uh, for, you know, for each for each contract. Well, they're making. They're making billions of these things. Sure, I mean, you know, I think if they do renew him, if they do keep his character alive, it's well, not going to be... We're this close to Dr. Evil money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yo, so. T- Robert Downey is one more contract from Dr. to Dr. Evil money. He's going to come in there and be like, yes, when we sign this contract, one jillion thousand dollars. <laughs> right. 
So I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if we'll see him around uh, much longer. But yeah, it, it really makes you think. It makes you wonder what the next movie is going to be. Because they, they, they're sticking to this whole three a year. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a third one. I just can't think of the top of my head which one that is. But maybe we'll hear more about that at San Diego. Maybe that's what they're holding in the tent. Like, what's yep. the actual third movie for next year? Yeah. Yeah, that 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 could be that would be one where you know I I don't think that would be because right, right now everyone's focused on Avengers. Mm -hmm. After what happened, they're focused on Captain Marvel, Avengers. Those are two movies that's got everyone's eyes, and because it just hit me just now, like what's the third movie? Yeah. So that might be maybe that's the big reveal, or maybe they don't want to do the reveal until they actually have Avengers four come out. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see, but you know, we now don't have to wait very long at all no. uh, if that is what happens and at SDCC. And again, next week, San Diego Confont, we will have coverage. We won't be there, personally. I really wish we did. Someday. We'll get there. Y'all keep helping us. We will get there right. so we can go there to San Diego Comic Con cover it live. But we will be covering uh, screen by screen, having videos posted, so there will be a couple extra videos next week. Please make sure you watch. Um, I'm pretty sure most of next week's podcast will be like the midway point of San Diego Comic Con. What's right. been seen and what's been talked about. It'll be so. a big news week. Um, but all right, let's go into let's go into Ant Man and Wasp. Like they did hit number one. Yeah. So this is Marvel's twentieth number one movie mm -hmm. on opening weekend. Yeah, and I don't think that's... Um, that's not that's shocking. That's not shocking. No, no. No, so that, that does confirm my turkey. Yeah. Three hits in three three hits this year. Bowling reference. Got my three strikes. <laughs> Done. So, um, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, after you watch this uh, switch over, check out the uh, spoiler-free review that we have of the Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, this isn't really spoiler-ish. Right. But there was reference of a buyer in the movie. Um, we're not going to go into who was this person... Working for no fourth, but there are rumors right now mm -hmm. that it might have been Norbert Osborn. Right, uh, we could have a uh, a pretty solid reference and tie in to uh, more Spider Man lore, um, you know, the wider Spider Man universe. Um, so yeah, it's it's not a not a spoiler. There is somebody in the movie who's trying to get a type of technology for a buyer, and this mm -hmm. buyer is not somebody that you want to mess around with. They keep referencing, you know, it's. It's a pretty big player, but they never actually tell us who it is. Yeah. Um, so that's very interesting, and, and they even say the rumor goes off that that this might be the person that also was buying um, Stark, Stark Tower, Tower mm -hmm. and Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. So this is Avengers Tower slash Stark Tower. Uh, if you've seen Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, they're cleaning it out. Tony sold it, but they never go into any detail. Oh, who that person um, was. And that would explain a lot because uh, that would mean, you know, why haven't we seen... Osborne, as big of a presence as Norman Osborne is in the MCU, why haven't we even seen? A I mean, let's with face. Let's go ahead and say it. Uh, Norman Osborne, aka the Green Goblin, is Marvel's Joker. Yeah, that's yeah. the closest they're gonna have to a Joker-like character. Mm -hmm. That is their Joker. So, with that being said, you kind of have to bring it in at some point. Yeah, I think the uh, Sam Ramsey did movies did him well. Um, yeah, but he he wasn't. He didn't become as highly revered as the Joker's of the past, mm -hmm. and that's what you're really trying to do if you're if you're introducing Green Green Goblin. I, I don't know how I feel about this rumor. I, it kind of got me excited, but at the same time, I honestly would rather see like a Kingpin. Well, we have Kingpin, <laughs> and and believe me, I would love to see Vincent D'Onofrio bring that character into the, the, big the, into the big screen. the big screen, because I think that's probably he's probably my favorite character. Like when they say it's someone you don't want to mess with, like that's who I think of. Yeah, I don't think of Norman Osborn because Norman Osborn was literally the the dual identity. Yeah. A lot of villains don't have dual identity; they are the way they are. Mm -hmm. But Green Goblin was that dual identity. He was Norman Osborn in the office. Mm -hmm. In the in the boardroom, and he was on a glider that night in Green Goblin mask because he was the Green Goblin. Those two right. separate people. So, when they say oh someone you don't want to mess with, I don't think of Green Goblin first. I always think more, if I, especially with Spider Man lore, I always think of Kingpin. Yeah, because Kingpin was that dude that everyone yeah. on the streets was like, you don't want to mess with him. Yeah, I mean it. It, it could very well be. Um, you know the. Uh, 
like I was saying, that you know, Kingpin is my definitely my favorite villain in the Netflix series mm-hmm. universe. Uh, and I think if there's any any star in the wider Netflix MCU series that can, that make, can it. make it into the movie is somebody with the star power like Vincent D'Onofrio. Mm-hmm. And he plays the character amazingly. Um, one of my favorite things about that was in the first episode or two that he was in, um, I think it was the first episode, I wasn't sure uh, if I liked the character because you didn't see that crazy side of him until, and this is a few <laughs> years out at this point so I can spoil it, but... Uh, you know the the scene with the car door. Mm-hmm. Once he starts killing the guy with the car door, then I was like, "Wow, you know, okay, all right, this, that's yeah. that's the kingpin I yeah, know. That, that's the that's the person that, that that I thought I would see uh, in this series. So, yeah, I mean, that could be one too. Um, either way, yeah, I'm not sure how. Uh, at this point, I think Kingpin is uh, is in jail, uh, or at least spent a lot. Yeah, of no, time King, in jail. Kingpin's in jail in the Netflix series. Yeah, and. I think that's just natural progression. Like, he's been buying things while he was in prison. Yeah. And comes out, he has a home. He has stock power. Like, he found yep. a way to do it. Or, I mean, we, we kind of got a lieu of, um, of the Sinister Six, possibly, at the end of Homecoming. Yeah. When Toons ran the Scorpion. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm getting a group together. Like, it's kind of it kind of Sinister Six-like. Right. Like out of the sense of six, six, the only other person I think that can like get like a mobster feel, well, not mobster feel, but like buying technology, right, would be Doc Ock, and that would be fun too. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, um, do do like the more the latest comic book iteration where, Ock, like, oh well, if you haven't read the comics, um, it was one time where. Doc Octopus took over Peter Parker's body mm-hmm. and became Spider-Man. And he really became Spider-Man like his, apparently his, Peter Parker's conscience was dead. So he became the superior Spider-Man. He was, he was he built a company in Peter Parker's name. Like, I like to see that kind of, without the whole taking over body part, I like to see him come up with his own company. Yeah. And slowly work his way up and bam, you have Oct Industries or something. Yeah, um, that that could work. I think if you're stuck in between Norman Osborn or Kingpin too, I think honestly, I don't know. I, I think Kingpin would be the safer bet just because Marvel owns Kingpin. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that that way, if if something happens and the Spider-Man deal falls apart in, in future movies, they can keep that tower. Wow. I don't They're think gonna take it's it it's a slow be, this is a slow this is a symbiote. <laughs> the symbiote Disney has turned into a symbiote when it came to Spider Man. They're like, I'm gonna stick on you for a little bit. Right. I'm gonna help you I'm gonna help make you better. Yeah. And as a host, I'm gonna take you over completely. <laughs> it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for Sony to give up on that partnership, but just in case. But yeah, either one I'd be very excited about. So we'll have to We'll have to give it some time, see how all that goes, and uh, we also have Daredevil season three coming up, so maybe yeah, we'll learn we'll, more about hopefully that. Hopefully, we'll learn some more. Yeah, I mean that really should be in some some way that should be showing up in San Diego Comic Con. Like I think they're they're already doing season two of Iron Fist. That is true. So maybe Marvel could concentrate yeah. more on the Netflix. The movie series. part might be down a little bit, but yeah. they're going to focus definitely on the comics, animation, and hopefully Netflix yeah. shows. Um. And while we're talking about joker like people, or characters, we have green lit, or we have confirmation that the Joaquin Phoenix Joker origin movie has been green lit. Why? Why do we need it? For one, we don't need a Joker origin. That's the fun part about the Joker. He's just crazy and shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah, you have the Red Hood storyline and everything. Those are great for the comics. I just don't think I want to see it in the movies. Um, but also, we've given uh, uh, Jared Leto, what, like, a total of 15 minutes of screen time as the character. I'm and they're already doing a spinoff. That Look, has I made this with bet it. with you a couple weeks ago. Jared Leto's going to be out. I don't know. Jared Leto's going to be out. I, I hope not though because I, it's it's I see right. the writing on the wall if, I see it if he is out we and, ain't saying it right now right. they don't want to look spiteful <laughs> it, but, but here's it's here's the confusing thing though if he is out and they try and do this movie on the side are they then gonna get a third person to play the Joker and because I've already said that this movie is a spinoff it has nothing to do with the DC universe. 
it's just really confusing. By you know, I, I don't understand why. Uh, why uh, a there is one is. other theory that I thought about that could work with this. Because um, I don't know if you know Jeff Johns is like they've been teasing uh, a theory called the Three Joker Theory. So a couple couple years ago during the Dark Side Wars in comics, mm-hmm. um, the Justice League all got like different godlike powers. Mm-hmm. Batman got the power of Metron, the god of knowledge. So he had this chair. He's sitting. He can get all. He he had all the knowledge in the universe. Yeah. And while he was on there, he asked the chair. Who is the Joker? And the chair spit out which one. There are three different Jokers. Yeah. He's been so, we find out Batman his whole career has been fighting three different Jokers and thinking they've been one. So, the three Joker series is going to, the three Joker um, theory is going to get its own series and comic books and like in the next couple of weeks, like Jeff Johns is working mm-hmm. on that. So they are going to get their own Series and comics, like a mini series, to deep dive into that. Maybe this is a way to do the three Joker theory on the big screen. Maybe, but at the same time, I mean, like, like you tell me that the the best, the greatest detective that ever lived couldn't figure out that. There that's were three what makes it people. so good. That's what makes it so good. Yeah. Honestly, that's the part that makes it so good. This is supposed to be the Sherlock home of our generation. Yeah. <laughs> You're the greatest mind. But especially if you've got Jarrett Leto and Joaquin Phoenix and potentially one other person playing the same character, they all look totally different. I don't know how they'd be able to translate that. Maybe Batman's film. racist. <laughs> yeah. Pale cl- clowns right. all look alike. Exactly. Yeah. He's going out to Ronald McDonald next. <laughs> so, I, I'm not sure. Either, either way, this just seems like a really strange uh, uh, way of going about doing things. I mean, maybe they can make it good, but... I do not have my hopes up at all for this. And I, I tend to lean towards giving somebody the benefit of the doubt uh, you know, with a lot of these movies. But I like Joaquin Phoenix. So I don't want to throw it away right now. I don't think I agree with you. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. I think this is... This is I think this is a cash grab. Because it's the lowest budget we've seen in a superhero movie. Lower than even Deadpool. Yeah. they like 54, 55 million. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty low for a comic book movie. Um, and then I think people there's a fan base that just wants to see Joker. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know I why think, they didn't I give think us this more is a that. way I think this is a way of going for a cash grab without having to spend so much money on Jared Leto. Because you would have to spend some money. He's this would be his his second time doing it. Yeah, but I'd imagine that Joaquin Phoenix isn't cheap either. If you if you take away some special effects, I think you're like this is a gut project. Like I'm gonna take away this. I'm gonna take away this. Yeah. No, I cannot do all those tattoos I did on you. I'm pretty sure that broke the budget. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tattoo budget was sky high. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure. You know, it, uh, I like I said. You know, normally I say wait and see or you know wait. Uh, yeah, he's normally the, the optimist. The fact I, that he's not optimistic is not. I am not optimistic <laughs> about this. Um, and yeah, every time I hear something like this, it's like you know, as a as somebody who's also a DC fanboy, and I feel like I've been defending them uh, with you know, like I said before, I like Batman versus Superman, uh, even though it had some flaws. I I like Suicide Squad, even though I thought the editing and story was a little crazy. It was still a fun movie, and you know, I'm def- constantly defending those things. And then, then they smack in the face. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then, then they throw another brick at me, and it's like you know, come on, come on! Like I'm trying to, I'm a fanboy. I'm trying to hold you guys up, and this sort of thing doesn't help. Um, so, I'm not sure. Um, I, that's still at least a year or so off, I would imagine. Yeah, no, that's it. Just got greenlit, so yeah. it's going to be a while before we have to see that. Um, and maybe during that time, Warner Brothers will have their stuff together. <laughs> Right. Let's face it; they're up and down. Like every week is something new, and we don't know which direction they're going in. Right? Like they need what well, they really need is a Kevin Feige. They need a Kevin Feige over there. Yeah. So, and I thought that was going to be Jeff Johns. Yeah. But Jeff didn't like being in the public like that. Right. He wanted to be behind the scenes, just writing. And you're probably going to get better work out of him that way than yeah. you are him being like Kevin Feige. So. They they need somebody that's uh, that's a Feige so that's like you need a fanboy, uh, more a fanboy, less a businessman, 
Uh, and you know that I think I'm I'm out. I already said I will snitch <laughs> <laughs> every chance I got. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're doing this. Oh yeah, don't wait. Wait till you see Robin. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> right. The problem is, is when when you have a a DC and Warner Brothers and a Disney and Marvel. Uh, when Marvel makes their movies, it's more Marvel and less Disney. But when I, you I have, see, I, you can hardly see Disney in a, yeah. in a Marvel movie. Like Disney's like, you have, it's been working fine. You do your thing. I'm gonna stay out of it and just take and just collect the money. Right. But with well, the, Warner well, Brothers, yeah, it's the opposite. Yeah, no, yeah. Warner Brothers is like their executives are coming down to the set every day, like, oh, what y'all doing? Right. So DC you know is what? not. In we need control. a brand placement right there. Right. Give so, me a purple Lamborghini. We're just going to put that right in there. Right. We'll have Lamborghini pay for it just so we can get some more money. Like, I, it, it, I think it's too executive focused yeah. over in Warner Brothers. So, oh. I don't know. Maybe that'll change now that AT&T has um, acquired it or is acquiring it. Maybe AT&T will be like, all right, let me just let me hire Kevin Feige, like care person, and I, then be like, yo, run with it. I feel like AT&T might make it worse. But... That's me not being a very hopeful fan. <laughs> I don't trust. I don't trust their billing cycle, so I don't trust the way they're gonna manage these superheroes. <laughs> right. I mean, telecom companies. I trust AT and T about as much as I would trust Verizon or Comcast to take over, you know, any comic book properties. Um, so, now I know uh, you had uh, some news uh, that you yeah, wanted we, to go. Yeah, we got. For. We got to stick with. The, we got to get some anime fans what they want. And let's face it, Toriyama came out. The creator of Dragon Ball, one of the pretty much the godfather of anime, like everyone knows about Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z mostly. But yeah. um, Dragon, I, I'm not an anime fan, and I know Dragon yeah. Ball pretty well. And they've done, they've done a reiteration. Uh, Toriyama came back and did Dragon Ball Super, um, because he did not join the Dragon Ball GT. He was not part of that. So yeah. that was, he's saying it's all non-canon. That, that stuff doesn't happen. There's mm-hmm. no Super Saiyan 4, none of that. It's stupid. So he comes out with his own series. It's it's pretty much... Honestly, I think Toriyama's trolling a little bit, but it, the last arc was pretty good. The p- Tournament of Power, and people are loving it. Mm-hmm. So he come, he says, I'm going to come out with a movie. Yeah. And we heard that it's supposed to be some ancient saying or something, so we're like, oh, I wonder who it's going to be. We find out it was Broly. So, this is Toriyama's take on the legendary Super Saiyan Broly, which we had a movie, we had several movies with him, but Toriyama was not a part of any of those movies, so they were never officially canon. Mm-hmm. So now, this movie is going to be part official, going to be officially canon, which is great for great for the Dragon Ball Z culture, uh, Dragon Ball Super culture, like people that really love Dragon Ball Z, been, been following Dragon Ball Super. So, I'm interested to see what his take is, is on it. But, again, my feelings of him trolling is still him. I think he's trolling. <laughs> I think he came out of retirement and was like, you know what? Let me show you how you... Let me show you young whippersnappers how it's done. Right. Because Dragon Ball is old. This is not... This is not something that's been around for, like, ten years. This oh, no. Is, I mean, I, is, I remember my friends watching it. It was already... It had already been going on for a while when I, my friends were watching it in elementary school. So yeah. you're talking about... We're not even talking... That was Dragon Ball Z. That wasn't even Dragon Ball right. in the first series. Right. So it's old. <laughs> and the fact that it's still up and kicking, you know, hats off to you, Dragon Ball Super. Um, can't wait to see what this what this movie's going to really do. Um, I don't think we have an official release date yet. We just got some fan art. Yeah. Um, or not fan art we've gotten an official poster showing us that you know it's going to be Broly and then we're going to find out again that power levels don't mean anything that's pretty much what Dragon Ball has done over the years mm-hmm. they introduce a concept power levels and then they say they don't mean nothing right <laughs> then wipe, wipe the slate clean <laughs> oh because literally that turn of power literally told me power levels mean nothing because we were seeing him go Super Saiyan Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan Red, and he was getting beat by regular dudes in Super Saiyan or regular base forms, and we was like, "Come on, what's the point of power levels anymore?" Yeah. But um, all right, that is it. We uh, there is some other news, but we're not going to talk about it. We only want to talk about the big things this week. Right. Uh, so we didn't talk on your subject like milestones coming out with uh, DC relaunching milestone comics. 
um, creating the M universe or even the the proposed new miniseries that's coming out for Marvel, Deadpool versus Black Panther. We'll right. we'll we'll talk about those on a later date. Um, we'll find some time, but now is our time for our random battles. So if you're joining us for the first time, what we do is we have a box full of superhero our uh, character names. They can be from any iteration, whether it's video games, comic books, movies, television, cartoons, and we randomly pick names out of it and face them off against each other. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's see what we got here. All right. All right. Rogue from the 90s comics. <laughs> Captain Marvel. All new, all different comics. I mean. <laughs> this, this has happened already. Yeah. <laughs> this has literally happened. So uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think Rogue. You can't you can't touch Rogue in any way, or Rogue gets all the powers that you have. Well, hold up. Now we're talking about 1990s. This is this is traumatically impacted uh, Rogue. She already because okay, if you don't know the 90s, the way Rogue got her powers of flight and super strength and so forth is she took them from Miss Marvel, who is now Captain Marvel, as I'm fighting as. <laughs> so uh, and put her in a coma for like years like yeah. a decade um, and she came out of that coma she elevated her powers now she's no longer Miss Marvel she's Captain Marvel taking on um, her ex-lover's name, name. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one's wiser this one's older this one's fought Rogue before knows exactly how to fight Rogue like yeah. her, her uniform ain't no skin except on her face and she has some helmets where she can put on. I think on, Rogue's only asset is really the whole um, touching. Right. If you can't touch me, and I have blasts, I can energy beam you away. Mm-hmm. And this captain has fought that iteration of Rogue before. Knows how she lost. She had she had ten years of being in a coma to find out how to beat you. <laughs> That's assuming she was able to consider it while she was in a coma. Yeah. If I'm in the coma, I'm thinking about how I'm going to kick your butt when I get out of this. Right. <laughs> but no, I, I think I think Captain Marvel now, more popular, more powerful, I think she got it. I don't know. All it takes is one piece of skin touching the other skin. It's, it's, to, beat, to beat Captain Marvel, you have to do the same thing you did, and Rogue felt guilty about that. She always felt guilty about putting her in a coma. But again, we're going back to no morals in these situations. True. We're not considering right. any of that. These are just two people fighting to the death. And if she knows what could happen, you know, then... And Captain Marvel also knows what would happen if she touched her. So she's like, nah, I gotta make sure right. this chick don't touch me. I think if, if Captain Marvel could beat her, I think it would be a challenge and she'd have to do it from a distance. And that's, all, and that's the thing. I have... Captain Marvel has the ability to fight at distance. Rogue in the nineties animation did not have did not have the power to fight at distance. She was an up close and personal fighter. Right. She you never for some reason that was weird. She never did get the the blast powers. That's true. Yeah. Like you you drained her so she was comatose for ten years and you didn't get any of the blast powers. <laughs> you got flight and vulnerability. You yeah. got the strength, but you did not get the blast powers. I feel like Rogue was cheated. Oh yeah, no. So I, I, I got too. all your powers except for the death touch, <laughs> and then some. Yeah. I, don't know. I think I think Captain Mar- I think Captain Marvel got this one. I don't know. We'll, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see if they pull that back up again. Maybe we'll see that in the movie one day. Oh, we need to see that in the movie. One yeah, day. we need to see that. I would be seeing the comic, but I, I think they've done it where like they fought off against each other and they made snide comments like oh this we've been this we've done this before and so forth right i gotta look that up i'm pretty sure i've seen it um but that's it you tell us tell us what you think tell us who you think will win rogue 90s animation comic i mean uh cartoon versus captain marvel of all different all new um com- the way she is in the comics right now mm-hmm. tell us who you think will win um put your philosophies down below let us know your comments uh like subscribe to our page Check out our Facebook and Instagram, and also stay tuned to our Twitter as we will be updating on future Twitch episodes and streaming. All right? Thanks for watching. Geek Philosophy, Geek Way of Thinking. Have a great day, y'all.
Bye. Bye. Thank you for stopping by Geek Philosophy. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, put your philosophy in the comments, and also hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of all future videos. Thanks for stopping by Geek Philosophy, the geek way of thinking.